Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be doing an alignment on the Escape. Uh, a couple weeks ago I replaced a couple outer tie rod ends on the front and did some tricks to get the alignment close to where it was before but it wasn't right even before uh, doing that. So today I'm going to my brother's house. We're going to be doing some actual measurements to see where the alignment is and making some adjustments to correct it. All right, so I'm here with Tony, and we have the Escape in the garage, and right now we're getting it onto his his uh, turntables, <laughs> which are uh, pizza platters from the dollar store. From the dollar store. So on each side, we've got uh, two of them stacked together here. It's a little hard to see in the dark, but there's two stacked together. Uh, they're they're taped together. And then on the front edge, uh, he's made some marks on them where middle mark is straight, and then there, there's marks at 20 degrees so that we can turn this and uh, measure the, the caster based on what the camber is at those, at those different marks. So we're going to get the, uh, the escape on top of these here, take some measurements, and see where we are. Uh -huh. Well, there's the problem. <laughs> All right, so we've got a camber fixture here that mounts to the wheel and then gives us a digital reading of the angle. And uh, so that's going to give us our camber when the wheel is straight. Then we can use the same gauge. Uh, we take, what do we do? Take a, a tire straight reading and then turn it 20 degrees both directions and take readings. Um, for the caster measurement, we only need a reading at 20 degrees left and 20 degrees right for each wheel. Okay. And then we'll do a little bit of math off of that to figure out the caster angle. Awesome. Yeah, that may even be within spec. Yeah. On probably. the driver's side, 0. 0.6 degrees. Yep, and then the little arrows show you uh, which direction that would be. So the arrow pointing... Uh -oh up over here and down over here means that we would have to rotate like that to get to level so then you can also double check that by pulling i'll just manually pull the top pad away from the wheel and we go closer to zero there okay so okay. we know that we have the top edge of the wheel leaning toward the middle of the car so the arrows point which way you need to to move to get to level yep very cool Okay, makes sense. And where do you get something like this, this gauge? So I ordered it. Here, we'll do an ad here. <laughs> I ordered it offline. Um, well, of course. It's, uh, <laughs> Watkins Smart Camber 2 is the, the tool itself. Um, okay. And I forget, you know, Watkins is probably the name of the company, but Google search Smart Camber and you'll find this tool and it will come with the whole fixture and... Uh, the digital gauge. Yeah, that digital gauge is real nice. Yeah, I think the standard gauge would come with just this upright plate and two of the uh, pads that touch the wheel. Uh huh. And then I bought the additional lower plate that gives you three points of contact to give you a little bit better, uh -oh. uh, a little bit more stable contact with the wheel. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, we're going to first turn the wheel to the left. 20 degrees, which will make it line up with the mark on the left on my plates there. All right. Oh, the whole plate's kind of moving. Yeah, it'll do that. A little more, a little more, right there. Oh, it's you going to spring back a little bit. Uh, yeah, you're still overshot just a little bit. A little more, a little more. That's pretty, pretty good there. All righty. And then we can take our first uh, camber measurement for the caster calculation. Right. Yeah, we're always measuring camber with this tool, but we do some math magician work, and yeah, we're still 0. 0.6. Yeah. Uh, although we're 0. 0.6 that, the other way. Uh, yeah, yep, we have the top of the wheel out now. Yeah. Okay. So would that be plus 0.6 with the yep. top out? Okay. Yep, that would be positive with the top out. All right. So we'll go ahead and take that measurement. Man, I would have like totally like <laughs> finished the left side and then... Uh, 
That's why you're paying me the big bucks. Yeah, right. So we are two degrees. And that would be negative. Is it negative? Oh, because yep. we have to lean it out. I mean, that's not just said negative or positive. Right. So we're we're still at two. That did not change. Yeah. At all. That's perfect. So what do you grease the pizza pans with? Um, just some some pan. Uh, whatever or? I have, uh, wheel bearing <laughs> grease, uh, PB blaster, WD forty, some olive oil, or nothing. Just the pizza pan metal on metal is yeah. low friction enough. What are they greased with today? Uh, I didn't add anything today. They had some residual <laughs> grease on them from before. Okay. Some some pepperoni grease or something? Yeah. <laughs> so we are negative one degree? Yep, negative one degree. Negative 0.9. So now we want to find the difference between the two measurements on each side. So positive 0.6 to negative 1 would be a 1.6 difference. Negative 0.9 to negative 2 would be a 1.1 difference. Then we're going to multiply each one by 1.5. One This is some pretty tough math here. Yeah, busting out the calculator. <laughs> uh, well, it's 1.1 .1 times 1.5. <laughs> well, go ahead and tell me. Uh, it's, let's see, 11 plus 5.5, so this is going to be 16.5 on the right. 16.5, 1. 1.65? Yeah, 1.65. Do, 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 do. There we have it. Positive 2.4 degrees and positive 1.65 degrees. And there okay. we can see we have not yet looked up our alignment specs. We just know what the vehicle is at now. Um, but with how different they are, with the camber being so different from left to right and the caster being different from left to right too, um, those will each cause the vehicle to pull. Um, I know camber will pull toward the more positive number, which would be the left here. Which is what, what exactly what it does. Uh, Alright, so you went online and you found some numbers for my car. Yep. And, oh, and you added them here? Yep, I just put them in the middle there for reference. So we're shooting for negative 0.84 degrees of camber. Okay. So our front left is very close to that. Yeah. And we have a tolerance of plus or minus 0. 0.75 degrees. So we can 0. go... 0.75? So we're, I mean, so we're within that. But. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can go 0. 0.75 degrees either direction from that number, and we're within 0. 0.24. So that's perfect here. Yeah. And then our front right <laughs> is way out. Uh, we're yeah. outside of the spec uh, the other direction. Yeah, well, and not only do we want to have both in the spec, but ideally we want them to be as close to each other. Yeah, so the spec for the split, so... Oh, um, this, okay, that's the split spec. Yep, we want them... Spot on. Spot on, yep. And that would also allow for plus or minus 0.75. So we can have them three quarters of a degree different, um, mm -hmm. but we want them as close to zero as we can get. Yeah. So we're way outside of that. We're 1.4 different, way out of that 0.75 different. Okay. But yeah, we may have a couple of things stacking up here where, where obviously camber is making us pull to the left, but caster may be influencing. I mean, caster is certainly influencing that. Is it making it an even worse pull to the left or less pull to the left? We'll, let's we'll look at, at that. Yep. Cool, all right, well let's make some adjustments, see if we can get the front right to come down a little bit, and uh, take it from there. All right, so we've got, let's see, tires jacked up, took the nuts off the top of our strut here, so I'm gonna try and push down on the tire while Tony 
turns this out guy. Not down out of the holes yet. Yep. There we go. And there we did fun things. Uh, is it not turning the... Uh, well, we're not quite out of that hole yet. Uh, I think it might be on the ground. Yeah, we may need to jack her up a little bit more. All right, jacking up. Oh, there yep. we go. Perfect. So we'll do a 180 turn there, and yep. now we're way not lined up with the uh, yeah, You probably just want a screwdriver on top, dude. A baby pry bar slash screwdriver. Um, that's where the more you push down over there, the more it wants to uh, that top of that strut. Uh, all right, we're in. So now if I set the floor jack down. Well, I want to get it up. Yeah, that's probably a better idea. Get them all started. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, good enough to put it down at least. Alright, so what we did here is you can see that the strut is not centered in this inside of this hole here. It's uh you know more towards this. Uh, so this is the the right rear corner. Uh, the strut was in this front left corner over this way. So we've moved the, the top of the strut over, which uh, this bearing up here is the top uh, pivot point for the suspension. So just making that movement should change our camber. We don't know how much yet. Uh, we're gonna go around the block and kind of let everything settle, uh, then take another camber measurement and see if we're closer to, what is it, minus 0. 0.6 degrees we're going for? Yep, that's the goal. All right, so let's take it for a drive and see where it falls. Well, we made a uh, little adjustment to the front by rotating that strut there. Uh, so I just took it for a, a lap around the block to let the suspension like settle back into place. And uh, now we're going to take a measurement on the front suspension again and uh, see how much we changed the camber just from uh, moving that strut. So, moment of truth here. Where are we at? Uh, 1.8. Okay. So we didn't really make that. Not a lot, but we did move in the direction that we planned to. Yeah. Want to. Yep. So that means that we need to come out a ways more. <laughs> yeah. Yep, but we have gotten to the extent of what we can do by adjusting the top of the strut there. Yep. So now we need to find a different method to adjust that. Yeah, so I think we're going to take the tire off now and see if we have some adjustment between the, the interaction at the strut and the steering knuckle to, uh, to bring the top of the tire out a little bit. Alright, want to get to the bottom one too. Uh, we did a baseline after jacking the car up and setting it down, and it went from 1.8 to 1.2, so mm -hmm. 0.6 difference. We're really shooting for zero here, yeah. which will actually get us to 0.6, which is our real target. Right. So they, if the gauge reads zero, then, then we're done. <laughs> right, we kind of have it bound up right now, having just lowered it off the jack. Um, but yeah, we did a baseline measurement with it bound up before how it was, so we're just kind of doing comparisons here. So shooting for zero. Yeah, 0.7. 0.7. And then I think at this point we're going to be taking the tire back off and doing some modifications to the steering knuckle mm -hmm. <laughs> so that we can lean that interface out a little more and get the rest of the camber that we need. Yep. Uh, but let's, let's take it around the block, confirm where our camber is, and then uh, do that. So we've done some grinding on the steering knuckle to uh, get a little adjustment on the interface between the strut and the knuckle. So uh, Tony's going to put our uh, gauge back on here and we're, we're looking for zero because everything's kind of bound up right now. Zero means that when we unbind it, uh, 
Yeah, we we didn't hardly move. Yeah, right back where we were. Yeah, all right, I guess we got some more grinding to do here. Now. All right, we did some grinding here, and now we have a little bit of adjustment down here on the uh, on the strut to knuckle interface. So hopefully this brings uh, the top of the knuckle out far enough to uh, uh, bring our tire camber in the spec where we want it. Um, and if it does, we could actually move back a little bit and tighten things down. So let's see what kind of adjustment we have now. Uh, is it still 0.6? It is, yep. What the? We have made no ground. No ground. Um, and we've taken a lot out of there. Yeah. Hmm. wonder if we are eating away at the wrong side somehow. No, I wouldn't think so because we need to pull the bottom of the strut out. Right. Yeah, to make the top of the knuckle come out. And when... Now, I'll put that back on there. Are we sure it's a, a negative? Ooh, that would be a fun twist. Oh, no. No, we are positive. <laughs> we overshot it. <laughs> By a lot. Oh, good catch there before we go back to grinding. <laughs> we need to review the prior footage and see. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Holy cripes. Okay, so that that's good. That means that we have some adjustment, which means I think what we want to do is loosen the the bolt on the knuckle, push the tire where we want it, then tighten the bolt back down, mm -hmm. <laughs> which we should be able to do with the tire on the ground. We can find out. Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, so we took it for a lap around the... Well, we made some more adjustments on the knuckle. To, uh, to get it in where I think it was right without driving it. So we took it for a drive and we're looking for about 0.6. Um, what is it, 0.6 positive we're looking for? Uh, negative. Negative? Yep. And there we have one negative. We are within spec now. Yeah. Both for the one wheel and for the side to side matching. Yeah. Um, the other idea would be maybe just to set the toe relatively close and take it for a drive now and see how it drives. Um, we're much closer than we were before. We are within spec. Okay. And, you know, if that left pole, if this was enough to get rid of that pole and it drives straight. Yeah, then that's then that's all that we need. perfectly fine to leave it how it is. Yeah, yeah, because the numbers are good enough where we're not going to have a tire wear problem. Mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah, let's let's do toe, see where we are. All righty. All right, so we are doing a really rough toe adjustment here just to try and get the steering wheel straight. And then uh, once we get that straight, we're going to go for a drive and see um, if we have any pull. Because the first critical thing here is to get rid of the, the pull. Yeah, that's probably plenty. All right. And then if we're rid of the pull, then we'll do some real measurements to fine-tune the toe. But if we still have a pole and still need to change the camber, that will affect the toe. So there's not much point in putting a lot of time in the toe just yet. Yeah, right, because if we got because we'd have to do all the toe measurements over again. So let's confirm our camber is good, and then we will do uh, the toe. So we took it for a drive and it's driving much better. Uh, it tracks straight down the road and actually the steering wheel is uh, straight as well, very, very close to straight. But steering wheel being straight and driving straight doesn't mean that toe is good. It just means that you've got uh, the toe adjusted pretty close to equal side to side for the straight steering wheel position. If the tires were towed way in or way out, you could still have a straight steering wheel and it could still drive straight, but you'd be really wearing your tires out. Uh, but it's driving good. 
So we came back and took some new uh, camber readings and did some math for a uh, caster. And where we came up with here, so we've got our before uh, camber and caster numbers and the after camber and caster number. And we're, we're really close together for both of them. So the spec is uh, negative uh, 0.84 plus or minus 0.75. And we are well within that. And even more importantly, we're very close together on both sides. Uh, so camber is great. And caster, again, it's very close together. Um, I mean, it's within two tenths of a degree. Um, so we're, we're on the high end of the spec. Uh, what is it? Caster is 1.6 plus or minus 0.75. So that's like 2.35. We're a little bit over on the left, but I'm not really concerned about that. It's not going to affect tire wear, and the numbers are really close together. So from a wander perspective, we're doing good. So at this point, we're going to actually measure the toe and uh, probably do some adjustments. If it needs adjustments, we'll do some adjustments. And uh, from that point, we should be done. All right, so we are almost ready to actually measure the toe here. So you can see on the ground we've got a couple of jack stands and we've got some all thread, an eight foot section of all thread across the front of the car. And behind the car, we've got the same thing. It's pretty light out there. But we've got two more jack stands. We got another eight foot length of all thread. Uh, so the first thing that we're doing here is uh, we've got some, some fishing line. In our case, we're using eight pound. That's not really so important. We've got some fishing line uh, taped uh, to the all thread here. And uh, we've measured the distance from the end of the all thread uh, to our first fishing line, then from the same end of the all thread all the way down to our fishing line on the other side of the car. Uh, then out back, we have done the same thing um, and replicated the measurements from the front of the car where we go from the end of the all thread to the first fishing line and that's the same distance front and back from the end of the all thread to the fishing line and then from the end of the all thread to the second fishing line so what that does for us is now we have uh, the two lines parallel to each other um, on the front or on the on the left side of the car and on the right side of the car they're parallel even if they're at a goofy angle relative to the car they're parallel uh, so now what we can do is start measuring from the hubs of the tires uh, to the fishing line and we can grab that all thread and move the whole all thread side to side uh, to make the fishing line it'll still be parallel to each other but it'll also be uh, parallel to the hubs of the car uh, then we can actually start making adjustments from there and this becomes important not so much on an old escape like mine where uh, you probably could just set it up to the hubs initially and move the, the fishing line on the all thread uh, but if you had a car where the front and rear track is different um, maybe you've got like a Porsche or something where it has big fat tires on the rear and skinny tires in the front it becomes more important to have your lines parallel first then make the lines match up to the wheelbase of the car. Uh, so we're almost there. Then soon here we'll start, uh, we'll get an actual measurement, make some adjustments, and uh, be finished. What was that one? 69. Oh, that's perfect. perfect. So now that we've got the strings set up, we're going to measure from the outer wheel to the string on the rear part of the wheel, then the very front of the wheel to the string to see whether the tire's tracking straight or if we need to adjust it. And being that we have the string completely straight now, if the tire is pointing straight ahead, our two measurements should be completely equal. Yeah. So we have 65 and a half there, and we have 66 there. Let's see, let me focus here. Yeah, so that's 
That's half a millimeter. And half a millimeter when you have, um, you know, it's 16 inches from the front of, to the rear of the wheel, half a millimeter is pretty darn close. Oh, yeah. Now, actually, on a front wheel drive vehicle like this is, having a little bit of toe out is is okay because when you accelerate it's going to pull the fronts of the tires towards each other a bit so i'd say that's pretty good yeah that I'm tire happy with that i wouldn't move that one a bit over here is the side that we've made a bunch of adjustment on <laughs> we'll see how close we just ballparked it yeah So we have 61 at the rear, and holy cow, 61. Are you serious? Yeah. I mean, we're just 61 and a half, maybe. Wow. Yeah. Well done. So we're... <laughs> so we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Tires are parallel to each other. <laughs> yeah. The steering wheel was straight when we drove it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, as straight as, as any car would be. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that's some... I mean, never had that happen before, but... <laughs> because, I mean, we, we adjusted the uh, the camber, which, when you adjust the camber, it changes how, you know, all the suspension sits relative to the tie rod on, and the steering wheel is, like, way off to the left. So we came back here, and Tony just went underneath there and, you know, gave it a couple turns on the tie rod on. Just to, to get in the ballpark. Yeah, to get in the ballpark, which actually put the steering wheel, like, straight. And not only did it put the steering wheel straight, but we're actually, like, spot on for actually, like, like the toe being straight. Uh, but at this point, if you weren't straight, what you would do from here is, you know, leave, leave the setup in place for, you know, your jack stands and the string and all of that. And uh, just, you know, reach under there to the tie rod end, loosen up the adjustment nut, give the tie rod end a little bit of a tweak, and then uh, take measurements at the wheel again to see, you know, where you are to, to fine tune it. Mm -hmm. um, in our case, we're not going to fine tune anything because we're already there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, at this point, we're done. That's really all there is to it. So if you are doing some, you know, suspension repairs or maybe you got a sports car doing a modification at your house and, and uh, you know, you'd rather take the measurements and do some adjustments yourself instead of going to alignment shop, which in the long run, depending on how often you're doing these, that could also save you money. Uh, even the most primitive setup like this is probably going to run you about 200 to $250 worth of equipments, equipment. So if you're doing, uh, you know, even just one alignment, that just about pays for itself. If you're doing two or three, uh, you know, now you start to, uh, you know, be spending less money compared to going to an alignment shop. So with that, thank you for watching. And uh, don't forget to like the, ch the video, subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff. And we'll see you next time.